Hello, Michael Mann here, and welcome to What Bike Next, episode five, the series in which Simon Hargreaves and I go head to head to try and find a Bike Social member their very next bike. And you never know, one day we could be doing the same for you. We say thank you very much once again to Pirelli Tyres for helping us make this series. Will you join us here at Superbike Factory Donington Park where we are going to try and find our bike social member Luke Self, his very next bike. And here he is. Good morning. Hello Luke. Oh yeah. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming on and uh, well, trusting us with our judgment. <laughs> We have a reasonable track record. <laughs> well, look, four out of four, isn't it? Kind of. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure what the score is. But... All four of our candidates so far have gone away with bikes, but not necessarily the ones we've chosen them. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so what brings you here? How can we help? Give us, your, give us the lowdown. Essentially, four years into, into biking, um, and I feel like a new biker still, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm trying to broaden my horizons, basically. I want to do a little bit of touring um, and wanted to get a bike that could potentially open that up, but still conscious of the fact that I'm quite young and don't want to go too far in that direction, if that makes sense. What, what have you been riding and what are you riding at the moment? What's your biking history and what yeah. are you on now? So, uh, learnt as a little and on off-road trials um, and then didn't oh. ride a bike. Oh, yeah. trials riding? Yes, indeed, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah, mark so. that down because you know how to ride then. Yeah. <laughs> Twin shot yeah. trials back when I was a wee lad. Um, and then um, passed and bought myself a GSR 600. Oh, okay. So didn't get on with at all. Did you not? I did not, no, no, no. What was it about that that you didn't like? It was peaky. Um, it had the brakes were terrible. I thought the suspension was terrible. Combined with my sort of inexperience, I just didn't get on with it. Could have put you off motorcycling for life. Potentially. But that was your first bike? That was my first bike, yeah. Wow, yeah. okay. And then what happened? COVID, lockdown. Um, sold that and then went out and had a look uh, completely unintentionally, went out for a street triple but found an MT-07. Okay. Uh, and that's what I ride at the moment. How are you getting on with it? Do you, what, what do you like about it and why are you looking to trade up? Absolutely love it. It's one of those bikes that you get on and every single time I get on it I think, oh, it's a cracking bit of kit. Yeah, yeah. Throughout lockdown commuted on it as an yeah. excuse to ride more and it's really economical. So that's one good thing. So it does about 60 to 70 miles to the gallon. Um, it's great fun. I quite like the torque and that sort of instant overtake ability sort of thing. What do you want to do with your next bike? What, what is it that you're trying to achieve? Are you still going to commute and do the sort of, do you do a bit of weekend riding? Do you? Predominantly we'll go out, um, so commuting, which is not a long commute, so nothing big on that one, but um, want something that is quicker and cheaper than the car. Um, go out for the weekend, maybe with a few mates, and then predominantly the new thing would be some tours. So. Wales, Scotland, and then eventually uh, Europe. Are there any other specific items on a hit list? Are there things that you actually definitely want and there are things that you definitely don't want? I'm guessing a Suzuki GSR is one <laughs> yeah, of the yeah. things you don't want. And I think um, the GSR has burnt me when it comes to sort of inline fours. I, I okay. just don't appreciate them. I don't know, maybe I've not ridden the right one, um, but I, I, I don't find there any sort of character in that engine. Inline fours, nope. Yeah. 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 Wow. Anything else? Not too big. I'm not the biggest human being in the world. Um, and every bike I've owned, so those two, I've dropped them every single time in the garden, handling it, getting it on and off of a paddock stand sort of thing. Got no issues riding it, but um, you know, like to be able to sort of throw it about a bit. Things I do want, heated grips. I suffer the cold quite badly when it comes to hands. Oh, absolutely, I'm with you on that one. And the goal is to get a bike that opens up the ability to ride further and farther and deeper into winter, that sort of thing, um, just to do more riding, really. What sort of budget you got in mind? Are, do you, are you gonna sell the MT7? Probably, yes, yeah, yeah, for space reasons more than anything else. Um, so it's gotta be a one bike does all sort of thing. Okay. Um, so we're probably looking at max eight. Eight grand. So there's plenty to choose from here at Superbike Factory, Si. I am fairly confident I can kind of narrow it down. How about you? Yeah, I think there's plenty to choose from. Yeah. Luke, do you want to go and have a cup of tea and then we'll meet you back here? Cracker. Right, well let's go and find Luke his next bike. Luke's going to test ride three used bikes we think might suit him best. One chosen by me, one chosen by Simon, and then a third bike selected by Superbike Factory's sales expert, Matt Isherwood. Then at the end, we're going to find out which bike Luke prefers. And hopefully, we'll have answered his question, what bike next? Luke's going to be testing our three bike choices on the what bike next test route. While brave in the chilly conditions in an hour long loop, Luke will take in the twisty roads of South Derbyshire as a mixture of A's and B's in town and out. 
plenty of riding for him to get a feel for his next bike. One of the bikes I'm thinking about for Luke is Ducati's Multistrada 950. Now this is a 950S, it ticks all the boxes for him, it's got the full fairing, it's got the heated grips this one because it's slightly up spec, uh, it's, the seat height might be a little bit high but the biggest problem is so is the price, it's quite a new bike and this is nearly 10 grand, however there's next to it is Ducati's Multistrada 1200 and this bike is 8200, slightly older, still got the problem with the seat height and this fella hasn't got heated grips. I'm torn, I'm going to have to find something else. So Aprilia RS660, might be a bit of a left field choice here. It's just, just a shade over his budget at 8.1, but it's 71 plates, so relatively new. Uh, it's really lightweight, which is what appeals um, to me about this bike. I think Luke might like the, the sort of the, the, how small it is and how easy it is to maneuver. It's got some good weather protection. Might be, again, a little bit too sporty in terms of its riding position. 100 brake horsepower, so you know that's, that's the right amount. No heated grips, but some good tech nonetheless. While we're talking about big V-twins, there's always KTM's 990 SMT. A little bit older, what a cracking bike this is. So this one is 5987, so it's nearly six grand. But it, again, it does everything right. This one's actually got Oxford heated grips, so it ticks that box. Uh, it comes with luggage by the look of it. The seat height is quite high, but it's slim. It's a really slender machine. So I think, again, this could be the perfect bike for Luke. I might choose the KTM. Well, the Ducati Super Sport is pretty much a good option for Luke, I think. There's plenty of weather protection with the fairing and the screen. It's a twin cylinder, 113 brake horsepower, so more than the MT-07 that he's looking for. The only downside is I don't know whether it's got, well, it certainly hasn't got heated grips, but it, whether it's too sporty in terms of its riding position and whether he wants something a bit more, I don't know, touring-y or something too tore on. Right, Luke, here we are. Time for bike number one. This is my choice, obviously. <laughs> Let's put the covers on, yeah, shall we? Yeah. Come on, without further ado. This is the bit like Christmas, isn't it? It's going well. We're unveiling an instalment. Oh, cracking. So, let's have your first thoughts. Interesting. I'm glad it's gone for a sort of adventure style bike. Uh -huh. Not something that was necessarily on the radar, but obviously they're very popular um, and keen to, keen to try one, definitely. So BMW F850 GS yep. Sport. Okay. And that's the important bit because it's got lots of bells and whistles. There's lots of extras with the Sport package, specifically heated grips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's got more riding modes. It's got, I think there's two are standard and then with the Sport package, you've got three more. Okay. Don't worry so much about the knobbly tires. They might not be up your street. I like the appeal. You had your history back in, in, in trials riding. Um, I thought that this at least gives you the opportunity to do the touring because it's pannier ready, top box ready. Yep. It's got the wind protection you asked yeah, about yeah. with the, the hand guards and also the, the, the extended screen. A big tank, it's got, what is it, 94 horsepower. Okay. So it's a bit more than the MT-07. It's got the get up and go. It's a twin cylinder. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 853 cc engine. It's 5,000 miles on the clock on this one. Okay. It's about 11 pounds under your budget, so it's 7,989. And you talked about having a bike that would do everything. I mean, it's got cruise control, it's got heated grips, as we've mentioned, it's got all the, the BMW gadgetry, it's got that great screen. I just thought that it might be a bit buxom, it might be a bit heavy, it might be a bit tall. You can get a shorter seat, okay. a, a, small, a, a, a lower seat, and they do in fact do a, a lower a suspension kit as well. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a, a do everything type of bike. But, you know, on, on that basis, what do you reckon? I really like it actually. It's a baby GS to some extent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I actually quite like the styling. I think it looks good. Um, not an inline four, so that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you're right, ticks all the boxes. Quite keen to get out and give it a try. All right, yeah. let's do that then, shall we? Perfect. Helmet on. Cracking, perfect. Well, it's time to try bike number one. Will it be up Luke Street or is it going to be a little bit too big to handle in the garden? Honestly, I started by looking at the F750 GS because of its shorter seat height, but then, like a magpie, got all attracted to the bling on the F850 GS, which, as I've mentioned, is the sports version. 
So that's got the added rider aids and other electronic goodness, all of which will, I think, win Luke over. I'm worried a bit about the weight and his concerns about moving the bike around, but I'm hoping that'll all be brushed aside with the overall spec and value for money. It's a proper do-it-all machine that fits the bill in terms of Luke's requirements. He'll have the power, touring capability, weather protection, heated grips, economy, plus it's easy to get a shorter seat and more appropriate tyres. The BMW has a velvety smooth twin cylinder engine, a lovely direct throttle action, brilliant brakes, so comfortable. Go on Luke, make the right choice. Luke, how was it? Uh, the beautiful BMW. Did you have enough time on your ride to play with all the rider aids and get used to the? Yeah, yeah. Press some buttons. Plethora of accessories. Yeah, it was. Um, it was interesting actually. It was. It's tall. It is tall. I have to say that. It felt like riding the sort of daddy long legs, and obviously with the with the tyres, yeah. the knobblies, you could feel that it was a bit skittish. But actually, quite surprisingly, handled quite well. Um, felt like it tipped in really nicely. Engine's really good. Um, parallel twin, really yeah. usable. Um, feels like it's got a broader range of power versus my MT. Mm -hmm. um, hands are warm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a yeah. bonus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, because it was quite tall, I was struggling on the sort of uh, low speed turning around sort of thing because I was right, really tippy toeing. Um, but otherwise, quite enjoyed it. Sure, but that's all changeable, isn't it? I mean, yeah. we can, we can, a little Pirelli have even offered us some tyres, if some different tyres, if you want to buy this, we can sort out seat, it's not a problem, that yeah. kind of stuff. Whether it will make enough of a difference for you to make, you know, make you feel super comfortable. Yeah, yeah. But it's good that you're already familiar with the Parallel Twin, and, uh, well, it's just got, like we said earlier on, it's got so many things on it that, that will suit your needs. Yeah. What didn't you like about it? Uh, probably a height, essentially. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Performance-wise compared to the MT? Performance-wise, no, it was good. You can tell it's got more power, so no negatives there. Brakes were actually really good, really, really good, actually. It's quite okay. impressed by that. Um, a lot of feel, a lot of bite initially, and it didn't dive more than you wanted it to, considering how sort of tall and gangly it is. Um, and that was your first ride on an adventure bike? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay, but it's not entirely dismissing it then. Not at all, not at all. <laughs> and comfortable You're trying to plant well. some seeds, Simon? No, not at all, quite <laughs> comfortable. Yes, yeah, yeah, on the move, that sort of sit up, wide bars, yeah, it felt good. In terms of the wind protection you're talking about, or weather protection, it, again, does it does it suit your needs? Is Certainly, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. You I can see that. yourself on it, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Handguards are great, needed to adjust that, but um, otherwise, yeah. yeah, definitely, yeah. Mega job. Okay, right, Shall we go and have a look and see what, uh, what I've chosen for you then? Let's okay. go and have a look. Yeah. Let's see what Simon's got up his sleeve. It's time for bike number two. Okay then, Luke. Here we are with your second bike. Yep. You excited? Yes. I'm really excited. Any ideas? No, no, Let's no, no. I'm, I'm guessing the shape. Come on, come on, come on. Ah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, cracking. There we go. So, Tracer 900. Yep. Uh, I think this is just 2020 bike. The good news is, 22 miles. Okay. Not 22,000, not 2200, 22. So it's basically brand new. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, that's the good news. The bad news is it's slightly above your budget. Expected. Number one. Okay. I say slightly, it's quite a lot. But who pays for their bikes like that? Everyone pays over the odds. And it hasn't got heated grips as with one of your conditions, which is why we have these lovely Oxford heated grips here, which I've spoken to Superbike Factory and they will throw in for nothing. Very kind, very How kind. How about that? So, what do you reckon then? Yeah, cracking. Um, uh, never had a go on a Yamaha Triple. Um, coming from a 700, I think the CP engines are really good. So I'm really keen to try this. I have to say this was one of the bikes that I thought fitted my sort of criteria. Yeah, it seems like the natural progression from an MT. You've got hand guards, so my hands don't get cold. Um, got a bit more wind protection, bigger engine, a bit more flexible hopefully. Mm -hmm. And I think it looks good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I thought maybe the Yamaha family thing would yeah. kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. turn you on. It's, the, it's that sort of brand essence. Yamaha do crazy zany stuff. Yeah. And the MT07, you've said how much fun it is, uh, that F word, and this is that plus. Yeah. You can get luggage. I'm not sure how much that Yamaha luggage is. I think it's probably, I think when this was launched, it was about 500 quid. So I don't know what it's gone up to now. It's probably doubled, who knows? But you've got the, you know, it clips straight in. You don't need rails or anything, you know, like certain other bikes you might have seen recently. And it, like I said, it is a, a, a little bit more expensive. Do you want to know how much it is? Go on then. Eight, seven. Okay, okie doke, okie doke. It still starts with an eight. That's right, yeah, it's in the yeah. right size. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. how I look at speeding as well. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Excellent. Well, um, let's go for a ride. Fantastic. Okay, it's time to ride bike number two but is the budget bursting Yamaha a little too expensive for Luke?
Of all the Watt Bike Nexts we've done so far, I reckon the Tracer 900 for Luke is the choice I'm probably the most confident in. Let's look at the facts. Number one, Luke likes Yamaha because he's got one already. Number two, he wants more than two cylinders and less than four, which is great because the Tracer 900 has three of them. Number three, he wants heated grips. Okay, we're a bit lacking there, but Superbike Factory said they'd throw in a pair. Number four, fairing, got that covered. Number five, a bit more power. Well, the Tracer 900 is 115 horsepower, which is up from the 75 horsepower of Luke's MT-07. And number six, fuel economy. Well, the Tracer can average 45 to the gallon, which isn't as frugal as Luke's MT-07, but if you want better, ride it slower. And then there's the price. Well, with 22 miles on it, yes, 22 miles, this is a brand new 2020 bike. It's a good chunk over Luke's budget but we can all find a bit down the back of the sofa when we really want to. And I think Luke will really want the Tracer 900. So then Luke, what do you make of the mighty Tracer 900? When you pulled the cover off, I thought, this is it. This is the sort of thing that fits the bill. Um, oh, I don't like the sound of this. No, 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 no. Sounds like there's a button uh, There's going. definitely a button coming. And as soon as I got on it, as soon as you pull off, that engine is just phenomenal. Uh, it's cracking. Yeah, it's really good. Um, it's got a sense of excitement to it. Um, it's got a nice big broad range of power. It's quick. Um, yes, I think similar to the BMW, the ergonomics surprised me a bit. In that, it scoots you forward. Um, yeah. It feels quite wristy, and yeah. I had to relax into that quite a bit. Um, and again, I was tiptoeing, which is clearly my problem rather than the bikes. So I actually didn't feel that comfortable on it, if that oh, makes okay. sense. Or I didn't feel that confident on it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. but it, it obviously handles a bit more sharper than the BMW. It's got a bit more sort of sporty. It is a slightly strange steering dynamic to yes. these things. It's a little bit of a weird feeling because it was because like, it's based on the MT09, which yeah. I think has a kind of I don't know. I always think it looks a bit like semi supermoto kind of ish with the way the headstock is set up, and these things obviously copy that, so they do have a bit of a weird yeah, yeah. dynamic. I think this generation, the, the well, you can see for yourself that the risers are so tall and the headstock so low. I think yeah. they changed that. Each time you said that yeah, earlier yeah. on, didn't you, off screen, off camera, they changed it a little bit, but maybe it's because of that. that so is that an off-putting thing? Are you kind of like, oh, it's not quite what I thought. Is it what you thought it was going to be? No, it's not actually, it's not. And okay. I think maybe if you give it enough time, you get used to it. But it, I think it was off-putting in that it felt sharper, but it yeah. actually felt more difficult to place than the BMW, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we were riding through um, avoiding speed bumps. Yeah. Um, and I felt on the BMW, you could put the wheel exactly where you wanted, uh, yeah. essentially. But with this, felt a little bit more vague. As That's such. really interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a nice oh, description okay. as well. It makes, it makes, yeah. makes sense. Of course, your hands must have been cold. It, well, I'm yeah. going to eat. <laughs> <laughs> they still grips. warm from the previous. <laughs> <laughs> from the VM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, blimey. Oh, I thought it was going to be unanimous like praise. I, so did I, actually. I, I thought this was the one. Interesting. Um, yeah, Interesting. Yeah. Well, nothing wrong with the engine, that's for sure. But no, cracking. What about the mystery bike, then? Should, Should we go and have a look? Mystery bike? Perfect, let's. Yeah. OK, we're on to bike number three, and this is the mystery bike. It's chosen by the Superbike Factory sales expert, Matt Isherwood. And here is what Matt had to say about the bike he has chosen for Luke. So, my name's Matt. I've worked at the Superbike factory for almost a year now as a technician and I'm based at the Donington site. So the bike I've picked for Luke is a nice middleweight Tourer. Uh, he asks for heated grips with plenty of weatherproofing. Look how smooth the bike is, there's plenty of power there, uh, quite light, nimble, even when the bike's fully loaded. Uh, it's a nice triple as well. So. Okay then Luke, should we have a look at the third bike, the mystery bike as chosen by Matt from Superbike factory. Let's get the covers off. Yep, yep. <laughs> it's as much of a mystery to us as it is to you. Oh, it's a Triumph. Triumph. Oh, okie doke. Oh, a handy little note as well. Okay, that's interesting. It's the low on here. So it's the 800. Yeah, it does look low. Yeah, it's 800 low seat. XRX low. It says it's the low one. So this is a 2017 bike, uh, 7787. Price, 3,600 miles, that's pretty good. That's good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's adjustable, isn't it? Yeah, you it is, undo. Yeah. Generous, it's a good screen. It kind of flops backwards and forwards. Okay. Yeah, Angel CC, triple. It's got the crash bars, lights, hand protection. I think this will have the heated grips. Oh, it has, yeah. Oh, right, okay. Heated grips and fogs, fog lamps as well. Yeah. Goodly good. 94 horsepower, 58 foot-pounds of torque, 65 miles to the gallon is the claim. 19 litre tank, 19 inch front, 17 inch rear. Four riding modes, cruise control, top box ready. How much is it? 7787, seven, so it's within budget. Yeah, yeah. This is a nice choice. Yeah. What do you reckon? Yeah, I mean, a lot of competition for the BMW. 
yep. certainly in that same sort of vein as such. It is, um, yeah. Sort of adventure off of the road as such, um, uh -huh. styling wise. Like I said, ticks of the boxes. Excited to try a Yamaha, uh, forgive me, a Triumph Triple. Uh -huh. um, yeah. All three of them, they've got centre stands as well, you know. That's quite handy. Low seat, which is kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. quite good. You know, you were saying that you wanted a sort of sportier kind of bike. Yep. And you've got two adventure bikes, but to be honest, adventure bikes have come a long way. Yes, they, yeah, yeah. They... You've not triumphed before, have you? No, no, never. I've had a go on a speed, mm -hmm. um, but not the smaller triples. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so excited. Yeah, yeah it'll be yeah. interesting to see how it compares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Yamaha. Excellent. Should we go for another ride then? Cracking. Okay, last ride of the day coming up. Okay, bike number three. Let's see if this is the one for Luke, or is it going to be too similar to the two previous ones? So Matt's mystery bike is one that I had on my short list, no pun intended. This Tiger 800 XRX Low is a factory special with a lower seat height, but also with a lowering kit which adjusts the suspension and ends up giving the bike a lot less ground clearance. The three cylinder engine loves to be revved and offers the same peak 94 brake horsepower as the BMW. But as it's a longer stroke of the Triumph 675 engine, it means this 800 version has more mid-range torque. It's the more road bias machine of the two middleweight adventure bikes that Triumph introduced back in 2015 with its smaller diameter and cast front wheel. And that motor is a dream. It's fast, flexible and frugal. It sounds great too. Luke should enjoy the test ride, but I don't think it'll be up to the spec standard of the BMW and it might not have the spring in its tail having just ridden the more powerful triple of the Yamaha. So Luke, what did you make of the mystery bike? So uh, flip side compared to the Yamaha, as soon as we took the cover off, I thought, oh God. Um, yeah, did yeah, I did. did you yeah. really? I thought, and I'm, I don't want to upset anyone, but it's an old man's bike, isn't it? <laughs> Poker face, I didn't read that. Yeah, 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 but it's a triple. Um, Triumph as well, so good build quality, good finish. Um, it's, I probably enjoyed myself on this the most. I felt the most comfortable, I think. Um, it's very low, it's too low. So I think we said that it's got lowered seat and lowered suspension Possibly as well. lower suspension, yeah. Felt like you was riding like a sort of eight panger Harley, yeah. essentially, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so if it could be, if that seat height could be a little bit better, but because of that, it could get me feet on the floor. Um, turning circle felt better. Um, triple was good, not as good as the Yamaha's. Um, good wind protection though. Um, yeah, actually, Quite enjoyed it. Felt like I could hustle it more, for want of a better phrase. Sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, Did yeah. the seat height compromise the riding position? Then you felt? Do you feel uncomfortable? Yes, to a certain extent. It felt like I was like that. If that makes sense. Um, yeah. Um, so if the seat was to come up a little, a touch, that would have been spot on. I was going to say, what about the engine? What about the gearbox? What about the sort of the, the, the dials, the dash? Yeah, 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 no issues with the dash. Uh, nice sort of taco, nice clear taco. Engine was cracking. Um, a little bit less. Um, exciting, lively than the Yamaha, maybe. Yeah. Didn't yeah. make as nice a noise as well. Sounds a bit more agricultural, but still nice. And I like that triple sort of spread of power as such. And you, you got a bit of heated grips, you yep. got a bit of cruise control, you got a bit of fog lamps. Yeah, 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 yeah. Spec. Heated grips were useful while it was snowing, so that was good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it certainly, like I said, with the suspension, you could easily lift that up. Yeah. With, I think it's just like tie bars. So okay. just new tie bars and it'll come back to where it should be, I think. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. Well, that surprises me mm, mm. quite a lot. Surprised me. Mm. Do you want to thaw out a bit, get into your civvies, grab a cup of tea, and we'll have a, a bit of a, a chat about where you go from here? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Luke, quite uh, an intense day then. You've ridden all three of those bikes. I was going to say, you've still got a smile on your face, but I can see there's some th this, this thinking going on in there still, isn't there? Yeah, certainly. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little bit disappointed with our choices, actually. Not necessarily the individual bikes, but the fact that we, only, we gave you sort of three similar style. Were we expecting anything else? No, I think I had one bike in mind that I thought fit my bill perfectly as such. Um, and I thought maybe that would be wheeled out, I'm not sure. And what was that? Honestly, it was a G Ducati Supersport was the only thing oh. that I thought fit the bill. That sort of sporty, with a touring intention, yeah. twin, V-twin. Bit of wind protection because it's fared and whatnot. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, that's the only thing that I've ever thought of. Yeah, that makes sense. I must admit, because from, from the, your sort of wish list, sports wasn't involved. It wasn't, no, 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 never mentioned. And, and so that's, I think, that would have guided our thinking a bit more. But in other aspects, you were very specific. You wanted heated grips. Yep. You wanted wind protection. You wanted not an inline four. So it was kind of like a very quite a... You were limiting some of the choices. 
As soon as you said not an inline four, all of a sudden that's 60% of the of the, yeah, of the, fact, of the that factory out, yeah. gone. I thought it was very, it was a challenge for us and I'm, I'm, I'm glad we kind of got what we got in the end. I don't know, let's, well, let's go through them, shall we, yeah, one yeah, by one? Sure. How do you find the BMW? Yeah, so um, surprising. Um, I think, as I said, engine was brilliant, uh, brakes were brilliant, felt nice and comfortable. It was a bit too, too, too tall for me. Um, and obviously we talked about changing the tyres, potentially that make a big, big difference. Heated groups. Nice big TFT dash, never really appealed to me, but it's nice, it's a good thing to, to look at and whatnot. And had all the weather protection, so totally ticked all the boxes. It works very easily, it's quite rider friendly, I think that, the whole bike in sense, yeah. but also the, the TFT display and, and the options and the rider aids that you've got there as well. Mm. Uh, quick shift up and down, yes. it's got that sport pack on it, which I think what is what attracted me to it, to think that you would like all that stuff. Mm. What, um, other than the height, is there something that, is there anything that would, would, would steer you away from that? No, not necessarily. I think I wouldn't have gone for that sort of styling, that sort okay. of adventure styling. It doesn't bother me that much. I was going to say, it's not an image thing, is it? No, okay. no, no, not really. I'm not too fussed about that, essentially. You're riding it and you're not looking at it most of the time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Didn't know if you were being fairly young, because you're 30? 30. Yeah. 30, yeah. I didn't know whether being 30 you were too young for a yeah, yeah. <laughs> Granddad's adventure it, it, bike. Yeah. It comes into play to some extent, doesn't it? But no, nothing else too negative about it, actually. Yeah, yeah. So I was absolutely gutted because I thought I'd got it nailed with the Tracer. I was thinking mm. it's Yamaha brand, so that's kind of used to that. It's the CP3, not CP2. Yep. I thought that might do the trick. It's got 22 miles on it. It's a brand new bike. You know, I thought that, that was just going to blow your socks off. And again, I always do this. I'm thinking, oh, a little bit more power. That's going to kind of... Mm. Yeah, yeah. But... No. I thought that was going to be the winner, let's be honest. I, I did, I saw it, I thought it looks good, uh, fits the bill. I'd say it's probably the disappointment of the day, not because the bike's bad, it just didn't fit. I wanted to get on it and think, yeah, this is perfect, and then just enjoy it. But it just didn't feel comfortable or confident on it. I'd probably need to spend a bit more time on it and decide if it, if that vagueness went away or not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting description, that, and, and for such a... I can Sometimes I get on a bike and I ride a bike like that and I, and I can't think further than the engine because for mm. me it's, it, that's what it's all about and yeah. the throttle reaction is, is, is nice and it's sharp and it's it's a plush thing. But, but the engine is so good in, in that you, you cling on to it because of that. If that makes the only sense. thing I will say is that if you can stretch to mm. the latest Tracer mm. 9, yes, yeah, yeah. it's a different beast. It's yeah. a better engine and the chassis is completely revised so now it behaves the way it should. It feels the way it's natural. It's, it's still got a slightly shunted forward, kind of, again, kind of a slightly weird riding position, but the dynamic is, is irreproachable. It's just beautiful. Um, that's my speech yeah. done. Well, it, it might be, you're right, though. It might be worth, if, if, you know, if you do consider that kind of yeah, thing, if the CP3 I mean, engine is a, a real go, then have a go on the latest one and, and yeah, see what you think yeah. of that. So how, how do you feel about the Tiger then? That was yeah, I felt comfortable on it. Um, as we spoke about, a little bit too low, um, and so that was slightly odd riding position-wise. Engine, nice triple, so enjoy the spread of power that you get from that. Um, left character full in the Yamaha, I think. But it felt good. It felt a bit more like I could just get on it and ride as such. Mm. Whereas the others, I had to be very conscious of what I was doing all the time. Right. And had all the equipment as well, so heated grips and, and wind protection and whatnot. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I sense that's not sparking you. I can't see a, a spark in yeah, your eyes. It's the it's the least... Ah, I don't know how to describe it. It doesn't give you that garage wood as such. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, yeah. It's the Good least. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Which I must say, you get from the tracer. So yep. it's got that working for it, and it's got the engine. But the other bits let it down. So unfortunately, it's been sort of a story of ergonomics all day, hasn't it? Really. Yeah. Sort of, yeah, yeah. Where do we go from here? What have we missed out? What's what could we have chosen? Like you say, you'd be surprised you didn't give you a super sport. Has this helped focus your choice in any way? Are you thinking right? I'm going to try a different approach. Yeah, certainly. I think um, it's just drawn attention to the fact that. Um, the, the goal is to get on and feel like something fits, essentially. You know, you want that sort of get on it and feel comfortable immediately sort of sensation. And that just hasn't happened mm. yet. So I think maybe getting out on more we did bikes. We did mention one bike, didn't we, that, that, that's an option to you, which isn't a used bike. Yes, yes, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Honda Hornet. Yeah. Which is inside your budget. Yep. It's brand new. Mm -hmm. It's got 90 horsepower. There's no kind of wind protection there, is there? No, Heated no. Grips. No, again, you can get all that stuff. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, is that something? It just makes me think Honda. Mm. You sit on Hondas, and they're they're built for humans. They just are, you know. Mm. That would be a natural. Well, what about sport. the Trans Alp then? Yeah, or the Trans Alp. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a bit adventure biking, and I'm sensing adventure bikes are not quite 
you're not quite ready for them yet. It's not the intended use. Um, it's always going to be sort of road road use. Um, but I'm not against the styling as such. Certainly. So what yeah. are you going to try next? Great question. So I, the the triple has been phenomenal. So the the triple engine. So I'll probably try another one again. Triumph. Um, probably. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So probably go towards um, something like a. Street triple, maybe. Good um, shout. Yeah, with a bit of a fly screen on it. Hopefully that'll mm. give me enough wind protection and they get a peated grips. You talked about a KTM. 790 or even an 890 Adventure, probably 790 yeah. uh, more so, just because of the height would be would have been another option, I think. Mm. That appeals to me. But I think it's helped focus as to what it is that's useful. So heated grips and being able to ride in, what was what, three degrees? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's quite chilly. cold. Yeah. yeah, I was fine all day. So that was really useful. The, the, the weather protection work, the heating grips work. Um, so know that that's something I want to keep. Um, and it's just about finding something that fits better, essentially. Good. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much for making the effort to come down here. And um, well, yeah, keep in touch. Thank you very much for having me. Cheers. 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 Well, there you go. That's a wrap for episode five of What Bike Next. And even though Luke has gone away from here without having a bike, a particular bike in mind, I'd like to think that we've given him some inspiration at least. Thank you to Pirelli for helping us make this series. Thank you to you for your comments and thoughts and, uh, and also some inspiration. If you want to be uh, involved in this process, then get in touch with us. Uh, the email address is enquiries at bikesocial.co.uk. And so long as you're a Bike Social member, and that means you've insured you buy directly with Bennett's, then you're good to go. Thanks again. See you next time. Okay then, Luke. Should we have a look at your first bike? Yep, yep. Chosen specifically for you. I went through an exhaustive process. I looked at all your hit lists and the things you wanted and didn't want. And I reckon I found your perfect bike. Okay. Let's get the covers off, shall yeah, we? Yeah, 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 please. Oh. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> what do you you. reckon? You, okay, yeah. We're taking the Of course. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Then at the end, we're gonna find out, are you rolling? Okay, on to bike number three, and this is the mystery bike. It's chosen by the Superbike Sales. Rolling. I'm down to one bar now on my Duracells. Right. Straight away. Well, they weren't new, they came out of the Halloween display. So. <laughs> time for bike, no, I've said time twice. We're here again. Oh, no. Not no, again. Not again. Uh, we'll be two minutes, <laughs> maybe three. Don't start it, Jeff. No more than four. Okay, on to... It's my mobile phone, so selfie. Yeah. We're going to find out something. Then at the end, we're going to find out which... Find out... What are we going to find out? Two, two, Come on, old man, let's go. <laughs> so we've gone from riding footage and me doing my voiceover yeah. and so in, straight into this, isn't it? Then at the end, we're going to find out which bar, oh no we're not, uh, so he knows what his next bike might be. So thank you for um, blah, 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 blah. <laughs>